My name is Pastor Paul Kafka. I'm filling in for your pastor, Pastor Charles, who came into close contact with somebody who tested positive for the virus. So will worship. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism. We're clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our gathering again.
and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to that. 
because it provides a peek into what we so desperately want to know, to discover about this Jesus. I think we want to know that he had a real life, that he was a real person born to be among us, to know our struggles, yours and mine. When sometimes we think he doesn't even know or care about us. Now, you might like the idea of Christmas, the presents, the tree, the full churches on those days, but we may not always want to embrace all of the full truth. You see, the humanity of God continues to be met with rejection. Seems like just hours after he was born, we get a little bit of his human life. In the passage that precedes today's reading, Jesus, who you remember some of you, in his early life was brought to the temple. Our reading today started, as was their custom, they went to the temple. Not just when he was 12, but, but earlier. And Jesus could not grow up to be the man that he was without neighbors, without friends. You might remember that in the, in the, in the passage just prior to this one, there's Simeon and there's Anna who meet him at the temple, who bless him. And today he's amongst the teachers in the temple. How many teachers are here today? Teachers? Current, former? Okay, got a couple of hands up. So he met with you today. He met with the teachers. So we find that even Jesus was helped and needed those people around him. His parents, of course, and then the teachers, the prophets. We've come to this time in the pandemic with our hopes, with our fears, with our hurts. Not by ourselves. Some of you may know that two and a half months ago, um, I took a tumble at the Arboretum and broke some bones in my pelvis. And it is only because there's been a lot of help a lot of prayers, a lot of people who have reached out and spoken and prayed that I'm able to be among you and to fill in for Pastor Charles this morning. You see, God sends people into our midst. Not so that we can be angry with them, sometimes we are, but so that they can help us, that God can speak through them. Like Jesus was sent into our midst at Christmas, at his birth, and through all his early years, to be among us, to know our struggles, yours and mine. At this time of pandemic, there are people around who help us, number one, doctors and healthcare workers, and those people that keep working even though we can't get out sometimes, our trash collectors, the folks at the pharmacy, <coughs> the street cleaners, all of the people that come into contact with us and that we're in contact with are sent by God to help us, to help us through. For the first time yesterday on Christmas, I met my nephew's new wife, who is God bless her and them, lovingly expecting a child. And I thought to myself, this is wonderful. This is great. Because they're beaming at being first pregnant, first expecting a child, just shown across the miles of Zoom that it was from Texas. And afterwards I said, thank you, Lord, for sending Josh and Rachel my nephew and his wife, into our lives. 
just like Jesus had those people that lots of times the Bible is mad at the teachers of the temple into his life. Just like you have pharmacists, you have family, you have neighbors who are sent into your lives to help you make it through. Somebody said at an interim I was at when the pandemic was new, oh, we're just going to be done with this in a few weeks. And then when a few weeks passed, people said, oh, woe is me. It's so bad. I can't make it. But folks were sent to those people by God to help make it through. We'll pray today for Pastor Charles and his family because Pastor Charles, as you know, came into contact with somebody who tested positive for the virus. You might throw up your hands and say, woe is me, woe is me. Well, wait a minute. Here we are, our flock, and we will pray. We will pray for Pastor Charles and his family. Think about it. People are sent into your lives to be part of your community, part of your circle of friends. And by having that circle of friends and neighbors, you are made resilient through Christ our Lord. You see, because those people help us as no one else can. And by those people being in your lives, our lives, God, through Jesus, reaches us and touches us. Where would we be if we were just alone? Where would you be if, if there was nobody that you could talk to, nobody that you knew, nobody who was ready to help you with a helping hand or, or elbow now? Where would you be? I certainly wouldn't be here at all. But God sends people into our lives so that we can be in communion with them and they can help us. So it's very fitting that today's gospel lesson ends talking about the adolescent Jesus, the adolescent Jesus. Jesus increased in wisdom and in years divine and in human favor. And I want to say not by him, his only self, but because there were people, prophets, priests, teachers, who helped him along the way. Who is helping you on this second day of Christmas? Give thanks to God for them. Give thanks to God because Jesus is reaching you even now. When you come for communion, Jesus comes to you. And as your friends and neighbors and pharmacists help you during these days, look at them with new eyes and see Jesus coming to you and your community. It's Christmas. Let's give thanks to God for the community that God sends us. In Jesus' name, let the people say, Amen. 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 Hymn of the day is ELW 640, Our Father, by whose name?
Let us pray for the church, for the world, and all in need. You come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation, that we live in service to you and the natural world. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. You come to us through people whom the world forgets. Poor shepherds and an imprisoned Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are in prison, struggling with addiction, unwell, or in any need this day, especially family and friends of Deanna Couture, who passed away on December 22nd. Barbara, Roger, and Marilyn Preston, who are not able to worship with us on a regular basis. Jennifer Clutter, Jane Kirchel, Valerie Borchard, Judy Markshausen, Lauren Martins, and Tim Morgan, who are ill. Jeannie and Rudolph Mohn, who are in hospice, and Judy and Tony Stratton, struggling with Judy's Alzheimer's. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open your hearts to forgive one another without committing injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. You come to us through those who have died, yet live with you forever, especially Nancy Thompson and Ellen Grant. We give thanks for Stephen, Deacon, and Martyr, who gave his life to tell the story of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this occasion, we give, we hear a prayer for Jordan Javier, that there be positive response of his body to the upcoming treatment for stage four lung cancer, asking that you bless and God the entire medical team. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those places where even during this time of pandemic, violence continues. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for the pastor of St. Luke and his family, Pastor Charles. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend all these prayers to you. Confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen.
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the works and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God who we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. was in the night in which he was betrayed. And the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's manger, at Christ's table, come, see what God made known.
Christ given for you. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now receive this blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Thanks be to God.